Martin was born on a very foggy night. The little wolf raised his head without knowing where his little snout ended, and the sky began. Mother wolf hugged her puppy. Through the fog, she turned to the moon. She didn't need to see the sky to know that the moon was beautiful. The following morning, the sun washed away the fog. The wolves of the pack greeted Martin with a long howl, as only real wolves could. Martin raised his head, but his eyes couldn't get past the branches of a woodland cherry tree. His heart started to race, enchanted by those shining red balls. Martin never looked at the sky, but no one noticed. Mother Wolf was waiting with joy for Martin's first howl. It will come, said the leader of the pack, because every wolf has a howl in his own mouth, as is the moon in his eyes. But Martin stood in silence for a very long time. Then he made two small howls, as small as the two cherries that had just fallen on his nose. Martin, wolves used to howl at the moon, Mummy whispered gently. But it looked like the puppy didn't hear those words. He just stared at the cherries before making them fall onto his tongue. The flavour exploded in his mouth. Martin picked up two more cherries. He placed them on his nose and stared at them for a long time in silence. Once, when a butterfly lightly touched his tail, he cried out loud as if struck by lightning. Days and nights were running away like little wolves who run to catch each other. But for Martin, time seemed to have stopped under the cherry tree. What are you? A goose? giggled the other puppies from a distance grimacing at the thought of tasting those fruits. But nobody dared to get closer, because when Martin cried butterflies, even wolves were a little scared. Martin doesn't howl at the moon, said the leader of the pack seriously. He will never be a real wolf, he ended, staring at Martin's mum. Mother Wolf looked for other gazes, but everybody put their head down and walked away from the woodland cherry tree. So the little wolf and his mum were left alone until the fog of a new evening made them disappear. But not everything disappears in the fog. Smells, for example, squawked a goose smelling danger getting closer. The fog indeed can hide things only to the eyes of those who aren't imaginative. And that goose had a lot of imagination. So much of it that she could imagine the dark and wet snout of a fox coming out from the fog. The goose ran away from there along with her fear. The next morning the goose was still running when she saw something dark and wet, coming out from the back of a tree trunk. Certainly that was not a beak, the bird thought, standing on her trembling legs. Are you a fox? The goose mumbled. No, I'm a wolf. Do wolves eat geese? No, they eat cherries. The goose breathed a sigh of relief. She liked cherries too. The goose looked at the little wolf. She looked at him very carefully. 
going further than the two cherries on his nose. Actually, he looked a bit like the fox. He had sharp teeth, but he didn't hurt her. The goose and Martin were very different, but they stood side by side like two little cherries. There came the evening, and with darkness there came the real fox. The goose could run away as she always used to, or she could hide herself because she was feeling good under that cherry tree. I will dress up like a wolf, decided the goose, sure that it was a brilliant idea. Without a second thought, she put some tiny pebbles in her mouth to reproduce Martin's teeth. Then she placed two cherries on her beak to look like a real wolf. Beware, I'm a wolf, said the goose, showing the cherries on her beak. The fox rolled on the ground, laughing out loud. She was a real goose, in word and deed. Then he saw two more cherries coming towards him. But the fox's gaze didn't get past the little fruits. And here is another goose, giggled the fox, his mouth watering. Beware, he is a real wolf, said a voice behind them. It was Martin's mum. The baby smiled to her. Then he looked the fox in the eyes, as he still had a friend to save. He made a small howl, showing the cherries and his teeth with them. The fox pricked up his ears, then he ran away, because only real wolves can howl that way. Even the fog had run away, and everybody could see clearly now. The puppies came closer, lighter than butterflies. The leader of the pack spoke too, but this time he did it after tasting a bit of cherry. It had a strange taste, but this didn't stop him from saying, Welcome to the pack, little wolf.